Okay, let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for making us your children. You washed away all our sins by the precious blood of Jesus Christ so that we can join you in eternal kingdom. Lord, you gave us true hope, true peace, true joy in our life, and we know you are watching over us all the time. Even today, you gather us here together so that we can listen to your word because your word is our spiritual food. Please teach us and guide us, lead us, so that we do not waste time in this world, but we will glorify you and please you in our Christian life until Jesus comes again. Lord, if there is any brother or sister who suffers these days, please help him so that he can trust you more and he can learn many lessons from this difficult time. Especially, we pray for all the churches in the world. Uh, there are many countries where people are suffering due to this coronavirus. They cannot gather together, and some brother, sister, they lose, lost their jobs. They have a financial problem and um, physical problem. So Lord, please help them and encourage them so that they can experience your power and your encouragement in their Christian life. So there are brothers and sisters who are not here yet. Please bring them here so that we can be together and we can praise you all the more. I commit the rest of time until mighty hand. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay, let's turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians Chapter 12, verse 31, the last verse, 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 31. Okay, let's read the scripture together. But earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. Uh, as you know, we are preparing for online summer retreat uh, these days, and all the churches in Korea, we are praying together uh, so that we can reach out for more people through this online uh, summer retreat. So it will start 7.30 p.m. Korean Standard Time uh, from 17th of this month. Uh, Monday to uh, Sunday for one week. So um, those who are outside of Korea, you can also join online. So just go to the website, uh, jbch.org, our main website, and there will be the link for uh, the, the videos. Um, especially, we are offering um, Bible seminar in many different languages, including English. So you can check it out and then you can join us uh, next week when we have this online summer retreat. And uh, many will come to church too, so it's offline too. So if you have anyone who wants to invite, you can bring them here to the church. But if you cannot, you can also watch uh, the video online. Okay, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. As you know, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is about the gifts of God for each member of the church. You have to remember, as a member of the church, God gives you gift. Uh, that can be, for example, like uh, preachers, they preach the word, and some are serving the brothers and sisters, some are encouraging others. Uh, there are many kind of gifts in the church. But here, in verse 31, Apostle Paul says, but earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. There's a gift. There's a more excellent way. And there's a best gift. Right? So which means is, uh, even though there are many gifts, we have to go for a better gift, more excellent way. And as you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, the next chapter is about the love, because love is the best gift. Love, you have to remember, right? In the church, 
Uh, we have become God's children by understanding God's love. We understood uh, Jesus died for us, spilling all of his blood for us. And then we have to show this love to one another. So that's the best gift. But my point is, um, there's a gift, better gift, the best gift. So as a Christian, we have to go for, pursue uh, the better things in our Christian life. So today, I'd like to share what would be the better way of living a Christian life. Now, many things we have to remember. We are not just settling in our current condition. Do you know that uh, people in the world, those who are not saved, they also go for a better job, better position. Uh, even they study more, right, to, to do more in the society. But as a Christian also, we have to find out what is the better things we have to follow. Uh, let's turn to First Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians, chapter five, verse seven. Second uh, Corinthians, chapter five, verse seven. Uh, let's read it together. For we walk by faith, not by sight. This is important because when we want to see what is the better way for us as Christians, we have to decide it by faith, not by sight. So that's why sometimes we Christians are confused that uh, maybe from worldly view, from the perspective of these uh, unsaved people, maybe we might be suffering and we might uh, not enjoying in our Christian life, uh, but sometimes that might be a hidden blessing for you. That might be a blessing uh, because we become mature by going through these sufferings. So I will explain uh, in many respect, respect of what is the better way for Christians. Okay. So number one, always God's love is much better for Christians than worldly pleasure. God's love. Okay. God's love fills our heart and God's love gives us the true peace, true joy in our life. It is love of God. We have to always feel in our heart. So let's turn to uh, Song of Solomon. Before Isaiah, there's a Song of Solomon. Mm, chapter 1, verse 2. First, uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 2. Let me read. Uh, Let him kiss me with the, with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. Okay, this is the word of the Shulamite woman. The King Solomon and Shulamite woman, they fell in love with each other. And actually this represents the love between God and us, Christians. Like uh, Jesus is our bridegroom, we are bride, right? Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. So this kiss means the beginning of the love between God and us, actually. For your love is better than wine. In the Bible, wine usually represents the pleasure. You know, when people drink wine, they are happy and they are singing, right? But your love is better than wine. What do you think? You know? Which, what, what touches your heart and what gives you the true joy in your heart? It should be God's love, actually, God's love. People who do not understand God's love, for them, uh, they go for something they can see, like uh, by sight, right? Like uh, the material things, the better car, better house, or whatever they can enjoy in this world, they say that that brings them joy. But for us Christians, we always remember God's love is what touches our heart. Let's turn to Psalm number four. Psalm number four, verse seven. Psalm number four, verse seven. 
Psalm number 4, verse 7. Let's read it together. You have put gladness in, our, in my heart more than in the season that their grain and wine increased. People, they are happy with the grain. Grain is harvest. Now they have a great harvest and wine increased. That is what people say. Uh, they bring me the joy. But for us, you have put gladness in my heart. God, you are everything to me. You are my love. You, know, you are in the center of my heart. Let's ask ourselves, really, is God's love better than anything else? Well, the material things come and go, actually. And remember, when you go, when you die, you go back to God naked. You don't, you don't take anything from this life. Okay? Only what you can take is God's love you understood in the time of your salvation. And whatever you have done in your Christian life, in the rest of your life after salvation. That will remain forever. But other things, they are in vain, actually. As Solomon said, everything is vanity, in vain, nothing, right? Verse 8, I will both lie down in peace and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Here, we have true peace, and we will sleep nicely. And God will make me dwell in safety, security, right? These days, due to this coronavirus, people are afraid. And then uh, we see so many people die in the whole world. By the way, tomorrow, we'll cross uh, 20 million in the patients uh, worldwide, 20 million. That's a lot, actually. Uh, I'm really worried about India because now India is the number one in terms of every day the new cases, right? So we have to pray for them, but still, God make me dwell in safety. You know why? Now, even if you are in the war, in the battlefield, if God doesn't allow, nothing will happen to you, actually. The bullet will go by you, but it's God who decides, you know, who lives, who dies, actually. Okay? And God loves us more, more than anyone else, right? Let's go to Romans, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 35. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Let me read. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Always, let's go for the love of Christ. Let me tell you. The love of Christ fills our heart. Okay? It touches our heart. What is evangelism? Evangelism is sharing the love of God with others. So, one thing is clear. If you do not feel the happiness and gladness and joy in your heart from the love of God, how can you say that to others you have to believe in Jesus Christ? Okay? So the love of God is what gives us the true peace and true joy in our life. God loves us so much um, beyond our imagination. I believe that God's focus is always on us, his own children. Uh, even though there are so many stars in the world, in the universe, God's attention is for us. And when we hurt, he hurts. He, we know that Jesus prays for us when we suffer. So God's love is better than anything else, okay? especially for us. And number two, for Christians, the Word of God, the Scripture, is better than anything, actually. Because the Word of God saved us 
The word of God is our spiritual food. The word of God gives us wisdom and power and strength. The word of God is better than anything else in the world, right? So let's turn to Psalm 119, the longest chapter in the Bible, right? Psalm 119. Uh, verse 72. Psalm 119, verse 72. Psalm 119, verse 72. Let's read it together. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. I find many times the scripture compares the word of God with gold and silver. Why? Because gold and silver are what people go for all the time, right? I think I told you this story that when one ship sank uh, in California, uh, the sea in the California, people found out some guy died in the, in the ship with uh, gold bars in his pockets, right? So he couldn't give up on this gold, so he just put it in his pocket and it was too heavy, he, he couldn't, he couldn't swim up, basically, right? Gold and silver. So let me ask you, what would you choose between the word of God and gold and silver? Many Christians say, yes, of course, the word of God. But when the, in reality, I saw many Christians saying like this, oh, today um, is Wednesday. I have to come to listen to the word of God because on Wednesdays uh, we, we come for the word of God, right? But when you have a, like a, some opportunity to make money or you know, sometimes like a, some part-time job or something comes up and then, oh, today uh, I cannot go to the church because I have some, some work to do you know, for some you know, money, basically, right? So many times, you know, some Christians, they go for some material things rather than this, the word of God, right? But the word of God, the law of your mouth is better to me than anything else. Psalm 112, Psalm 112, verse one. Psalm 112, verse one. 112, verse one, let me read. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. Blessed. Who will be blessed? Blessed is the man who fears the Lord and who delights greatly in his commandments. When you delight, when you are happy, you know, when you find joy in reading the Bible, does that happen to you? Have you wept? Have you wept while reading the Bible? Like, you know, because the scripture touches your heart so much? Or have you really felt great joy while reading the Bible? Because it encourages you so much, right? This word of God is the best gift from God for you. Um, this is what happens when you have a children. And then when you find your son or daughter do not eat properly, are you worried or you're happy? You are worried, right? They have to eat, actually. When they are healthy, they will play, and then they will eat nicely and they grow, right? But when your Christian life is not going well, when your heart is far away from God, also the word of God doesn't touch your heart, actually. So it's very easy. Uh, you can ask yourself, is my Christian life okay or not by looking at you know, how much you are reading every day, the Word of God. That is the uh, indicator, you know, how much uh, you are really, you, you love God or you obey the Word of God. How much you read every day and how much you meditate on the Word of God. Psalm 119, Let's go back to Psalm 109, verse 92. 92. Let's read it together. 
Unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. This psalmist says, I had affliction. Affliction means he suffered. But he says, unless your law had been my delight. God, your law, the word of God is, gave me strength and power. That's how I could go through my affliction. Sometimes life is tough. And we suffer, we cry. You know, sometimes uh, people hurt us, and sometimes you face like a financial difficulty or physical difficulty. And uh, some people around you, like your family members, hurt you. That's when we come to the word of God. And unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. I suggest you, when you are in affliction, read the Psalms. Actually, Psalm. Psalm is like a the best medicine for your soul and encouragement and strength for your soul. And after salvation, one moment, you have to feel that, yes, you, had, you should have this experience. Yes, the word of God really touches my heart, encourages my heart. Without the word of God, how can I live my Christian life? If you hadn't ha haven't had this experience, you know, uh, still, your Christian life is not right. The Bible gives you wisdom. Wisdom. We are not wise, actually, right? For example, uh, we want to preach the gospel to others, but sometimes we don't know how. The Bible gives us the wisdom how to talk to them, how to preach the gospel to them, and how to live a holy life in this wicked and sinful world, actually. This is a dangerous world for Christian because the sin abounds. Do you know, um, when you watch television, uh, some scenes on the television are so violent or even uh, some are not like appropriate for Christians, right? It's like when you watch those uh, drama or those things on YouTube or TV, it's like you're inviting them to your house. You have to be very careful these days, right? When you watch something, suppose you see these violent people fighting, you know, killing each other. It's like you're inviting those people in your house, right? It, it, it somehow changes you, right? So we, are, we have to be very careful these days because there are so many kinds of temptations uh, we spend too much time with this worldly uh, entertainment, right? So the Bible, the Word of God, should be our guide and our encouragement. Listen to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. After some, there's a proverb. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. 13 to 15. Let me read. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. Verse 15, let's read it together. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Her means wisdom. Wisdom. Here, wisdom means Jesus Christ, actually. Uh, it is referred to as a her because in its English practice, uh, referring wisdom as a her, but anyway, wisdom is represent Jesus Christ. So, happy is the man who finds wisdom. All the wisdom can be found in Jesus Christ. And the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds, the wisdom's proceeds, are better than the profits of silver, and her gain than fine gold. One scripture you are memorizing will go forever, actually. You know? uh, it will help you. It will encourage you. That's why in our church we are memorizing scripture every week. That's the practice. Right? We are not doing that for English uh, team, but that's what we do for Korean brothers and sisters. So the word of God is better than gold or silver or anything in the world. It's better. So when we look at the word of God by our faith, not by sight, we know how important uh, it is. Also, 
Let's remember the fellowship of Christians, the working together of Christians are really important and it's better than the socializing with worldly people. Okay? Listen to Psalm number 84. Psalm number 84, verse 10. Psalm number 84, verse 10. Psalm number 84, verse 10. Let's read it together. For a day in your course is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For us, this house of God is a much better place than any other place. Of course, there are many places where you can have fun, more fun, you know. But for us, we know that when we come to the house of God, uh, in Matthew chapter 18, Jesus said, when two or three gather in my name, I'll be there. So this fellowship is where Jesus is with us together. And this is the best place we should be. The fellowship. It doesn't have to be church building. Wherever we are, it is the fellowship. So here, the psalmist says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Doorkeeper means, you know, doorkeeper. We don't have doorkeeper in Korea, but uh, in India, when I was in India, there was a doorkeeper in every shop or shopping center. They are opening the door. They, they get paid very little, actually. Okay? It's, uh, it's uh, uh, a very low-paying job. Okay? But still, if you can be in the place where God dwells, that will be much better. Last night, uh, I had some fellowship with some brothers because I, I, I'm taking care of some groups, right? So brothers gathered together and we had a dinner together and we went to a coffee shop and then we shared the testimonies, especially that because of this upcoming summer retreat, they were sharing uh, who, to whom they are preaching the gospel, actually. Like mostly they are family members. And while I was listening to their testimonies, I was really touched because um, they were talking about their father, mother, their sisters, brother. Even though they are family members, they say, don't talk about Jesus. I don't want to listen about it. And they keep rejecting, actually, right? But still they are trying so many times. And then these days, because uh, it's online, we can give the link, right? They keep sending the link to these uh, friends or some people. And then I was thinking that, Wow, because of these brothers and sisters, that's how we can live as a Christian together. For example, uh, when we planned this online summer retreat, I was thinking that, oh, is it going to really work? Because these days, because of coronavirus, especially the people don't like to coming uh, to the church, right? But it's working actually. Uh, in Swan Church, uh, every brother or sister they are giving the list of the at least the 10 people whom they plan to invite, actually, right? 10 people. And then uh, five people, they are uh, suggested to, to invite to the seminar by online or offline. So we have this goal, right? Uh, 10 people for prayer and five people for real invitation. And I was thinking that it was too much, actually, right? But when we are together, when we see all the brothers and sisters are working so hard to preach the gospel uh, in this rain. Today is raining very heavy, but today I know some brothers, they said, I will go to visit my father and mother in the, some countryside, and then I will talk to them, and I will watch at least one uh, session of the Bible seminar. So they are doing their best. And I was thinking, wow, it's possible because we are together. You know, suppose you are alone. You try to preach the gospel alone, then it's so difficult. And when people reject you, you are so discouraged. But when you have brothers and sisters working together, praying for each other, right? 
Let's go to Ecclesiastes, chapter 4. Ecclesiastes is after some, there's a proverb, and there's Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9. Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9. Verse 9 and 9 to, to 11. 9 to 11. Let me read. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fail, fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls. For he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Two are better than one. Christian life is not an uh, individual life. It's together. That's why we are emphasizing this fellowship again and again. And let me ask you. Suppose you didn't come to church or you didn't join the fellowship. Is there any brother or sister calling you, checking on you, saying, oh, brother or sister, why you didn't come to the uh, fellowship, right? If there's no one, there's something wrong, actually, okay? That means you don't have this uh, close fellowship with the brothers and sisters, that's why uh, nobody cares, actually, right? Verse 10, for if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Right? So why God wants us to be together as a fellowship, in the fellowship? Because we help each other, we pray for each other, we share everything, the happy times and then sometimes uh, our difficulties we share. This is a fellowship. And for this fellowship, you have to open up your heart, basically. You open up. Because without opening up your heart, it's really difficult to have this uh, close fellowship, right? So if you have some prayer request, you share. Sometimes, uh, some people join our fellowship and they are very surprised because usually in the fellowship, we share everything. Especially our weaknesses. Oh, I made this mistake again, right? And then suppose you have some financial difficulties. Oh, I have these difficulties. You share everything. In, in the world, in the society, you don't do that, actually. Because when you show your weakness, weak point, people take advantage of it. They try to take advantage of it, uh, and then they try to manipulate you, right? And when they come to the church, and then they, when they see we sharing everything, they are surprised because that is the will of God. Okay. This fellowship, the church. What is the church? Not the building. Is this assembly of born again Christians together? Because we will go to heaven together. We'll be there eternally together. So you have to open up, and then you have to at least have some close brothers and sisters so that you can help each other. That is better, much better. So think about it. If you have more uh, unsaved friends, uh, this uh, non-Christian non friend than Christ, uh, uh, Christian friend, something is not quite right, actually. Okay, right? So this fellowship is much better than any... Um, socializing or any other friends. And also, one more thing. Let's do 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Verses 22 and 23. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 and 23. Let's read it together. So Samuel said, has the, Lord our, uh, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. 
For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. Listen, to obey is better than sacrifice. What does that mean? Sacrifice means in the Old Testament time, people came to God and then offered sheep, the animal sacrifice, basically. There is a sacrifice, really, because you give up. You can eat that sheep or animal, but you give it to God. So it is really sacrifice on your side. But sometimes, you know, people made a mistake when they thought sacrifice is more important than obeying, obeying. God loves when you obey, actually. This obedience, obedience is the best we can give to God, okay? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed, to heed means listen carefully, listen carefully, to heed than the fat of rams. In the church, I see some brothers and sisters who obey very well. Obey means that they really listen carefully. I will give you one example. Uh, for example, there are single brother, single sister who are not married, right? And we know from the scripture there, you know, as a Christian, we are not supposed to marry a non-Christian, right? It's clear. From the Old Testament time, the Jews, the children of Israel, uh, were not supposed to marry Gentiles, right? And now, uh, we Christians, we are not marrying unbelievers because our goal is different. Our, you know, this uh, direction we are going are totally different, okay? And some brother, sister take it so seriously and they are blessed, by the way. But some, they listen again and again, but they don't care, actually. And then when the, they find someone really good looking or with nice background or those, you know, they say, oh, he's my type, like that, right? Uh, they disobey. And then uh, their Christian life is not going well, actually. Verse 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. When you rebel against God, it's like witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Stubbornness means when you are stubborn, you have your own will. Huh? You don't listen to God. You just keep going on your way. The stubbornness is just like an idolatry. You know idolatry? You have an idol. You worship idol. You know, the, the, the Israelites, they had this uh, golden calf and then worshiped idol. And in the time of Old Testament, if you worship idol, you are supposed to be stoned to death, basically. So this King Saul, this is uh, about King Saul. Samuel, the prophet, is talking to King Saul. King Saul, even though, even though he was a good person, actually, in terms of morality, he was a very nice person. He was humble in the beginning. He didn't commit some moral sins like David. David is a murderer and adulterer, but not, not like that, uh, King Saul. But the biggest problem of King Saul was disobedience and stubbornness and rebellion, and that's why he failed, right? For example, he knew God anointed David to become the next king. So you don't like that because you are king now, but David is there, and God has a will to make him king next to you. King Saul tried to kill him because he didn't like that idea. Right? Obedience means no matter what God says, we just obey. Full surrender. If you half obey, half disobey, it's disobedient, actually, right? That's what King Saul did. Uh, when God said, destroy the Amalekites, he spared the king and some good animals. That was the beginning of his disobedience. So let's remember obedience. Listening to God carefully, that's what pleases God the most. That's better, much better than anything else, obeying. And one more thing, 
Even if your income is small and you are not really um, you know, rich, it's okay. If you can serve God with a little income, it's much better than uh, disobeying God or not living a good Christian life with a big income. So let's turn to uh, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 16 and 17. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 16 and 17. Let's read it together. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with the trouble. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a fetid cup with hatred. Better, better. The scripture tells us it's better. Better is a little. Little means you don't have much. You are very poor with the fear of the Lord, but you fear God. You want to obey God, right? Then great treasure with the trouble. You know, I lived in the in America for ten years, and I, I was in India for ten years. So I experienced both the rich country and the poor country, and even Korea. Now we are doing very well, right? But my conclusion is, actually, you know, when you have more, when you are rich it's more difficult to live a good Christian life. That's true, actually. When you are very poor, then you focus on God, you trust God, because you, know, you are poor, you have nothing, right? Then your life is not easy. You face many all kinds of difficulties. And somehow your heart becomes so pure so you, you have a very good relationship with God, but when you're rich, there are so many kinds of temptations coming to you, right? So sometimes I give this example, right? My sons, when they were in India, they couldn't play the internet games because the internet was so slow, right? And one day they were playing because the internet was fast, but then no, no electricity, suddenly, because uh, Every day, like three or four times, two or three times every day, power cut. It's very inconvenient, but we are used to it. That's why uh, in the nighttime, all the lights out because of power cut. You know, we are so used to it. We, nobody is surprised, actually, okay? Internet, no internet, all the time, okay? You know, when I came to Korea, the internet, for example, is very fast. So let me ask you, with this fast internet, do you glorify God or no? You follow your own desire. You know, sometimes it's a great temptation because uh, it's so fast, especially in Korea, we have this uh, culture of pali pali, right? Quickly, quickly. So everything is fast and then um, one brother, he joined the mission team, mission to India. In two weeks, he couldn't use his smartphone because, uh, you know, no internet, because it, we went to very deep in the countryside, basically no internet, and then, so he couldn't use his smartphone for two weeks. And then, before he left India, he said, I never imagined I could live without smartphone. But now I know it's possible. And he said, I found it's, it's much better. I had more time to meditate on the Word of God. I am really glad that I had this experience, right? That's true. You know, we are surrounded by so many things which disturb us. That's why we do not think about it. Can you find, and can you find time to read the Bible one hour, you know? Solid hour without any disturbance? Well, Kakaoto comes again and again, and then a lot of disturbance, right? Better is a little with the fear of the Lord. Better is a little. Remember, the word says, better is more, right? 
Better is new, new things. Okay? As a Christian, be careful with these, all these material things. Let's turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6. I want you to remember this because um, especially in our time, this money is a great temptation. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. Let me read from verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. Now, godliness with contentment, contentment is satisfaction, okay? Godliness with contentment is greater gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And verse 8, let's read it together. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. Content means satisfied. With food and clothing. Do you have a food at home and clothing, right? Then you should be satisfied. That's true, actually, right? We have these basic things because, verse 9, but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Verse 10, let's read it together. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Sometimes I see some brothers and sisters moving to another place for a better job or basically for better money, actually. But there are no church, and then the, the work hour is so tight, you cannot really join the fellowship. But they choose that job because they want the better job, better house, right? In Korea, for example, you know, we want to have like insurance for everything, right? We have a basic health insurance, but we, have, we want to have more just in case you have a cancer or something else. And then what about the pension for retirement? Suppose you have no pension for retirement. We are worried, right? Right? We have uh, more than enough, but we are worried because everyone has this pension and insurance. I'm wondering sometimes, Apostle Paul, did he have a pension or insurance or whatever? Actually, for him, God was insurance. God was his pension, right? When God is with you, he will not make you starve. He will take care of you. But these days, uh, you know, in this advanced society, we trust all the system more than God. So when you have a very little balance in your bank account, we are worried actually, right? Even though we have God who can help us, you know, if we have, you, you don't have a, a very low balance in your bank account, we are worried. The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Remember, you know, that comes, that, that is very subtle actually. Slowly, slowly, uh, your heart is taken away by money. Okay? That's why Apostle Paul says, with having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. We shall be content. And we have more than enough, believe me. When I was visiting Pakistan for mission, I heard this story. One girl, uh, she was sick actually. Uh, there was some contagious disease in that area. She was dying. And then the mission team, they couldn't do much, but uh, uh, the pastor had some compassion on that girl. So they collected some, some kind of medicine they had. For example, a vitamin they brought for mission trip. They, they have a vitamin C and some vitamin. And some, like, uh, uh, some nutritional things, like uh, some medicine, actually. Not really medicine, but you know, some uh, health supporting Thing, right? So what happened was when they gave that vitamin and that uh, medicine to her, she survived and lived two more years than any other 
children in that village, actually. And the mission team realized that, wow, they are dying because they don't have this simple, the simple things, actually, vitamin, right? These nutritional things. Of course, two years later, she died for some other reason uh, because this condition is very bad. So we, we, for us, we can get these things very easily, right? Um, anyway, so, verse 9, those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare. So when you have a little, but fear of God, that is much better than being rich. Okay? And one more thing is, it's better to suffer for doing good Always, it's better to suffer for doing good. No one wants to suffer, but the Bible tells us it's better to suffer for doing good. Let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. First Peter chapter 3, verse 17. Let's read it together. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. It is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good. Which means that, suppose we suffer for God. You know, we have a more than 100 missionaries and their families all over the world from our church, right? They are suffering for doing good, right? And it is better to suffer that way than just enjoying in our life. Do you know why it's good to suffer? Because first, when you suffer for God, there will be reward. Eternal reward. Believe me, those who are suffering for God, there will be reward which we cannot imagine right now. Right? Let's turn to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 11 and 12. Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. Let's read it together. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Blessed are you when they, they means the people in the world, they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Just because you believe you are Christian, they persecute you falsely. And then, you know, they make you suffer. But when that happens, Jesus said, verse 12, rejoice and be Exceedingly glad. Exceedingly means so much glad. Sometimes I think that I have never been beaten for God. Nobody beat me for, nobody persecuted me that way, right? And sometimes I'm thinking that, oh, maybe I'm not, I will not get much reward in heaven because uh, uh, you know, some Christians, they go to the prison and even they die and then all kinds of suffering they experience. But for me, I was never even beaten once. Um, I was beaten once in my life, not for Christ actually, <laughs> in the army one time, right? Other than that, I, I don't remember I was beaten. You know? uh, I was hit. So. Suppose, you know, that think, let's think about Apostle Paul. He was in the prison, and sometimes people beat him with a stone. They thought he was dead, 
and they left. And then he came back alive again. All these kinds of suffering. Jesus said, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. What have we done for Christ? What have we done? Jesus died for you. He gave everything for you. What have you done, right? Sometimes we just go for our own desire and pleasure. We might feel ashamed when we stand before God later, before the judgment of Christ, right? With Apostle Paul, there'll be so many brothers and sisters who will say, oh, I got saved because of this apostle's work. And then with you, there's, if there's no one around you to, 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 who will say thank you to you, right? It will be so bad, right? Let me tell you, our life is very short, very short. And this is the only one chance for us to work for the Lord. And the night is coming. Night means that when we cannot preach the gospel, okay? You know, when, we, when I heard about this online summer retreat, I was thinking that, oh, this coronavirus is spreading and then people are disturbed. We should, do we have to do this? I was thinking in the beginning, right? And then I'm thinking that, wow, again, you know, church, the leaders, the pastors, they are right, you know. At least when you walk together this way, we can save, even if we save one person, that means one person is much better, greater than the whole universe, right? Whole world. So we are, we are getting the whole world, right? So we work together. That's good, right? So suffering for God will give us reward. And let's turn to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 67. 67. Psalm 119, verse 67. Let's read it together. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep your word. Before I was afflicted, before I suffer, I went astray. I was not really obeying God. I was just on my own and then... I was astray. I lost. I was lost. But now I keep your word. Because when you suffer, you come back to God asking for help, asking for wisdom. Right? Verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. Do you know why the Bible doesn't touch your heart? Because you are not suffering, actually. Do you know that if you re work really hard, you will feel hungry, right? So those who are working in the construction area, they eat a lot actually, right? Because they are working all day, and then they have this appetite, great appetite, and they eat a lot. But suppose you are not working at all, you just sleep through the whole day. Then would you feel hungry? No. When you suffer, the word of God really touches our heart. Now, when we cry in our affliction, and when we see David is also pouring out his heart in Psalms, we, we are encouraged, right? So it is good for me that I have been afflicted. I'm quite sure when you go to heaven, you will say the same thing that, you know, it was good for me to suffer in affliction. And that is what you will say. And one more thing. It is better if you are slow to anger. You know? um, this being angry uh, is not a Christian thing, actually, right? Let's turn to Proverbs. Chapter 16, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. 
Proverbs 16, verse 32. Let's read it together. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Mighty means warrior, you know. It's much better than the conquering one city as a mighty warrior. He who is slow to anger is better. He who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. If you can control uh, your temper, it's much better than you take a city. This is one of the mistakes which uh, we Christians make. We sometimes we, because of our temper, some are very hot tempered, so we lose our, you know, this temper and then we get angry easily. But the Bible says, he who is a slow to anger is better than the mighty, right? Actually, you know, this anger does not do any good for our Christian life, right? Suppose you see me as a pastor. You know, I get angry and then I just say harsh things to others. You don't respect me, right? And that's the same that when uh, other people look at you, you say you're a Christian, but if you do not really show kindness and gentleness, but if you get angry easily, all your testimony doesn't work, right? People say, oh, you are the same, okay? Don't get angry easily. And that, of course, I know that is not easy because that's why if you are slow to anger, you are better than the mighty. So the mighty, the mighty one is the one who fights very well, but if you, so the controlling your temper is much more difficult than fighting in the battlefield, basically, okay? But it is better uh, to be slow at anger. Uh, there are some more things, actually. Uh, I, I cannot cover them all. But let me just conclude. Um, why we read the Bible? Because the Bible is the guidance for our Christian life. And God teaches us what is the better, what is better for us, which, which is the better way as a Christian, right? You might think that if you become rich and then if you live a comfortable life, that might be better. But the Bible says no, actually, no. So some are very, different from our thought. That's why we have to learn more and more from the scripture to, to know that what is better, really better for, for our Christian life, right? So loving God, God's love is much better than the pleasure or the joy from the world, right? The word of God is better than gold and silver, right? This fellowship is much better than uh, that our associating with, you know, these unbelievers were all these things, like a suffering. We don't want to suffer. But now we know that, you know, when you suffer for doing good, that is much better because there is a reward. And then we can learn more and more as Christians. So what is better? And I'm telling you, you know, you want to be better in your career or in your in social life, uh, even uh, in your workplace, you want to be better and then you, you put so much time, like as a student, you want to be better student, you study more and more, but really how much effort are you putting to become a better Christian, right? Uh, for that, you have to read the Bible more and we have to learn more. So let's try to become a better Christian so that we can please God and glorify God more. Let's pray together. Our gracious Father in heaven, thank you so much for giving us the Bible, your word, so that we can learn many lessons from it. And today we learn that there are better gift and the best gift. And then in our Christian life, we have to go for better things in our Christian life. And Lord, sometimes 
is different than what we think because your, your way is and your, your way is much higher than ours. So we have to learn more and more from the scripture. Lord, we want to be a better Christian and we want to glorify you better in our Christian life until Jesus comes. So Lord, please teach us all the time. Make us more obedient to you and make us more humble and make us follow your way in our Christian life more and more. So Lord, just not only just listening to the word of God, but also help us to apply them in our life so that we can grow as your children in coming days. And Lord, we pray for this online summer retreat from August 17th. Um, we are having this online and offline summer retreat together and we are planning and we are praying for it together. Please make it successful so that we can, we can evangelize many souls this time before Jesus comes again. We know that with the, and all other signs that you might be coming very quickly. So help us to be awake as a Christian and preach the gospel this time so that we can win many souls uh, from this online summer retreat. Thank you so much for this time, and I pray everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.